so anyway before my camera died uh that's that's the plan is i want to start doing uh consulting trips and helping people out and and like i said i'm not charging for it so if anybody's questioning that no i'm not charging for it i'm just doing it just to help people because that's what we love to do is we love to go out and catch fish so if i can help just one person go out and catch fish that's what it's about for me so uh, we are going to start doing that uh today's supposed to be an absolute scorcher 100 and 113 degrees heat index uh we were out yesterday offshore fishing and we had a nice breeze in the morning but oh my god it stopped and it got brutally hot we were literally using the freshwater washed down from the sink as a shower so uh it was hot but anyway we're gonna go out and uh, do this consult trip and hopefully we can get into some fish which i think we will so i'm looking forward to it All right, folks, what we're doing is I we, we were stopping at a marker and I asked Dave, I said, have you, uh, you, do you know how to approach the marker? And he said, no. And I said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to, as I'm looking at it right now, I can tell the tide is pretty much dead. So um, they should still be on this side of the marker because of the, um, because of the tide was going out. So it shouldn't, they should still be on this side. So drive by it like this and see if you mark bait. When you drive when you drive by it next time, you want to drive by it this way. Because they're yeah, because you're yep. Okay, so there's bait on there. There's well there's bait at this marker. So right now that tide is completely dead. Yeah. Okay, so now it's marking on this side. That's good. Okay. That's fine. But let's get, since the wind is coming, let's, yeah, let's see if it's on this side. And that, that right there is indicating that that's white bait. This is indicating thread fins. That's white bait. So they're more on this side. Okay. So that's, that's what, um, that's what you want to remember. Now that we know that they're on this side too, we've got the wind coming at this angle. So we're probably going to have to set up here. We'll have a direct angle coming here. Mm -hmm like this because the tide's not running okay. and then um, we'll start chumming and see if we can't get them up okay. so I was just telling them how we want to get it set up is we want to get the back of the boat in between those two pilings and since the winds coming this way it should allow us to um, I want to have the back of the boat right there so I can chum because the chum's not going to move the chum is actually going to sit still um, if I was typically in this situation, I would probably throw out my anchor and put the boat in reverse and create a false current, but I don't think we're going to have to do that. Uh, I think they're going to be easily, uh, be able to get them up in the chum and, and catch them. So, uh, we'll get the boat situated. And... He said day's over before it began. Oh yeah, look at them. Enjoy your loop, friends. Oh, look at them. Yeah. All right, folks, we got the bait thick. I, like I said, the tide's not moving, and I knew we wouldn't have to put the boat in reverse, so we've got it going. Dave's getting ready to throw our eight-foot, quarter-inch talon cast net. I told him if he can't catch bait here, we're just going to go back home. And folks, do you know how hard this is for me not to throw the net? Oh, really? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, I love to catch bait. Well, That's probably my favorite thing to do. If Dave doesn't catch anything, you have to throw the net because I don't <laughs> want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> They're ready for you, man. They're thick as all get out. Oh, he triple loads it. See, I don't triple load it.
many as I thought, but... Hey, at least you got some. We're not going home. We're not going home. <laughs> nope. See how much little more little little effort. Yeah, because I gotta heave when I yeah. when I do it on the shoulder. Sabiki, what is a sabiki? You've never used a sabiki? Huh? No. It's a. I know what a sabiki is. Oh. I'm just teasing. But <laughs> I was like, wait, you've never. I'm like, no. <laughs> I I don't, don't, am I sabiki. teaching you something? Sabiki. My daughter loves them. Yeah. Well. Oh, there's some fish in there. Okay. I think one would be. And folks, just like that, that's how you get set up, if, especially if you don't have a tide. If the tide was running, it would be a little bit different, but since the tide's not running, we have a heading due uh, south with the wind. We just sat there and the chums practically going straight down and boom, those fish came right up. And folks, just like that, I threw one more time and we're done. We have the bucket, we have fish in the bucket enough for cut bait we've got bait in the live well so we were good to go and literally now we were just going to go straight across get them used to what i'm looking for and show them exactly what we're doing um when we got here i told dave i said you know i said it's rare for me not to touch the net it's just i actually love and enjoy catching bait and so he threw the first time and i couldn't help it i said do you mind if i throw <laughs> it's just it's just i don't know it's a satisfaction thing for me but and dave when he saw me do, throw the double load instead of doing the triple load like he throws it he's like i may need to learn that because i was able to get the net away from the boat and get it to where the chum was going and get on the bait fish so this is this is what this trip is all about it's a learning trip it's getting a better understanding of what they're going to look for when we're finding grouper and snapper and things like that and i told him i said look i said we'll we'll put bait in the live well but i said the majority of the bait i i think we're going to be using today is cut bait and i think that's going to be true so we're going to get at it now okay folks what i'm doing now is i'm going through dave simrad and showing him some different applications of what see that right there mm -hmm. yep. that's bait okay okay so that's indicating that there's bait about we're in 26 feet so it's about 10 feet off this way okay so now we're coming up to the edge of the channel right here and i was showing him how you can touch the screen and and zoom in on it so then touch backs and it goes to this orange box right here so now we're getting right close to the edge of the ledge and i'm going to show them so now we're going down the, the ledge there okay there see that yeah, I'll get where it drops okay off. yep where it drops off now so we see this so i'll touch this and then i mark it um new waypoint boom safe just like that gotcha. so you hit this and it shows you new waypoint and you create a new waypoint and boom so you what you want to do is you want to get on that and you, you hit clear cursor and it goes away now see all that right there that's rocks see that yeah, yeah. okay so now you want to hit that and then create a new waypoint boom save so now you just create a new and then you clear the cursor to begin the, the system again so th see all this right here mm -hmm. that's bait and that's fish okay okay so that's exactly what you want to be looking for okay so what i'm going to do is now that i know that our heading is probably going to be about like this because of how we were set up at the skyway okay or not at the skyway at the but at the marker so now that i know okay our, our heading is going to be about like this i'm going to go ahead and get the boat set up on this mark i'm going to zoom in on the gps uh section of it and then we'll get it set up and then we'll set up so go ahead and deploy your trolling motor he's got the auto deploy lazy <laughs> fancy things never that's what do. shay's supposed to do man yeah. no. that now he's not throwing the anchor yeah. he didn't throw any chump well he did something did, did some chump i'm like chad i'm waiting Look for him to he's, tell me to throw the dang he, he's, in the water he's back the here you know just hey, chilling Chad. up. <laughs> Thanks for showing me how to fish. <laughs> Chad's not showing you anything. Hey, Chad just goes out and catches boat, right? fish. I, that's what I'm saying. I watched Chad. Chad now you don't have to use your trolling motor. Okay. I'll get us there and then we'll get it set up. And then you see how there's a lull there and then there's more. Mm -hmm. 
okay as I'm showing him now we've got on his side imaging there's a I'm gonna mark that there's a ledge new waypoint save clear get everything going so there's bait there there was fish there there's another one there another ledge there you're gonna have about a thousand dollars worth of waypoints when they're Fantastic. done with it. but this is see that right there mm -hmm. so that's what we're doing we're sitting up on the shallow side looking down into the into the into the the shipping channel and as you can see there is a ton of ledges so what I try to do is I try to start that first waypoint right at the beginning of that ledge and let it run through or if I see a significant section of that ledge then I'll mark it at the end so I'm gonna mark that end there boom 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 clear that's only number 34 waypoint what's wrong with you there's a gag a little gag oh nice come on no dolphin no dolphin Shh. you don't talk about it grunt see folks as i as i explain time and time again if you're catching grunt that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You definitely want to stay in the area if you're catching grunt. Throw that in the cooler. We're both, uh, they were too, they're both using cut bait. I was using cut bait. And I got bit, but it wasn't very convincing. So I threw on a live bait. As soon as it got to the bottom, it was bam, fish on. So I'm going to try uh, live bait again and see what happens. But as I always say on the boat, you want to have everybody doing something different until you establish that pattern. Oh yeah, hey, he's not even close. Alright, I came to the back of the boat because the boat had switched a little bit and I jokingly said to our, Dave actually said to me, he says, if you come back here and you catch a fish, if what? I stopped after oh, that because I knew I was, I, I said I was going to jump in, but I was like, nah, I'm going to say it and then he's going to catch the fish. Well, I just want to see you jump in. <laughs> so anyway, what happened was, is that I was watching what style of jig he was using. And um, he was using a Stewie and we were using Huggies and, and, and uh, Shay and I were catching fish. And unfortunately, Dave, he, he lost, he got cut off. But he wasn't getting really he wasn't getting a lot of bites so i and and i said well if i come back here and i catch a fish then i know what the issue is and i'm not going to say anything until i catch a fish well i caught a nice snapper just now and sure enough it i think it was his jig style to be honest with you the co as i explained to many people it's not the color it's the style jig that makes a difference sometimes and these fish will get keyed in on certain styles of jigs like there's days that they won't touch anything but a a uh, uh they won't touch anything but a stewie jig because they're eating live bait and they like the way that live bait is on it like a lot of times i'll get the snapper where the snapper are not they don't want to fully take the bait if it's hooked in the nose so i'll take a stewie and hook it in the tail and send it down and they'll eat it so changing it up like that if you're getting bit but they're not being committal to it change it up change the style of your jig find what works once you find what's what works then you're good i don't know if this is yeah that was bottom so that's what that's what you want to do and i think that was the case with with dave get on him he's running yep he ran right to that rock that was a big grouper okay tighten that up a little bit more <laughs> Don't ever get bit by one of those. Cause they'll, I, th I can't remember, somebody put something in their mouth and it broke it. Oh, arf, arf, arf. how you doing? <laughs> I'm here for the buffet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, get on him. 
Don't worry about your drag at this point. Ah. No, apparently. Stubber! Oh my god, he caught a stubber! This is a good one. Hmm? Yeah, he's okay. He's bigger than Dave's. Yes, wow. he is. I think Dave's starting to get a hang of it. That's going to be a nice snapper right there. Oh, God, yeah. That's a good one. Oh, that's a beast. They hooked got Rob. All right. Did you? Yep. I'm looking at Dave over there. Man. Is that your biggest snapper, Dave? Yes, sir. There you go, folks. That is exactly, Ooh. exactly why I want to do the consulting tricks. It's because moments like that, when I asked him, is this your biggest snapper? And he was like, yep. And there you go. I told him when he was fighting, I said, that's a good snapper because they, they have a different fight to him. But Dave, great job, <laughs> brother. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Shay! Yeah. What are you doing over there? About to switch poles because apparently this big one ain't ain't, ain't for this. Hey. Shay. Yes. Getting it done. That's what happens when I, when I start fishing. I'm gonna have to show you guys what the heck. Was that on live or cut? That was on live. Okay. One ounce huggy? Uh I need that for one ounce. Yeah, that's one ounce. Yup, you earned this. Well folks, that was a fun uh consulting trip we got into a mess of mango snapper caught some grouper and then the tide started moving pretty good and it kind of i showed them an indication of what happens when the tide starts running like it did so but we we had a slow tide in the morning we were able to get on a really good snapper pike caught some su caught some good snapper uh david was able to catch his personal best snapper so um it was we got a cooler full of them and the main thing was to get them out and get them uh to get them a better understanding of their electronics how to set up on spots what to look for so i was able to load him up with multiple different waypoints and so now he has a more comfortable feel of what his machine is, is showing him and what he's looking for and how to set up on these spots what we're going to do now is go back to the office and uh clean up the fish and uh we'll show you what we caught and then i'll talk to dave and shay about their trip and what they learned so stay with us and we'll be right back so dave what do you think it's awesome just amazing did you learn anything a lot okay good that's the most important part is that you learned something the setup is key yeah and that's that's what i was getting wrong yeah was you, finding that heading yeah you had the idea and you you could understand your machine of what you were looking at but then you explained to me that it was the the actual heading and understanding how the boat's going to sit exactly. and we were just talking about that in with another customer inside just now to where his biggest thing is understanding his relief shading understanding uh the side imaging and then i explained to him how the, when we call all most of the snapper the boat was set up at one situation and then it started to switch and then it went like this because the tide picked up just a little bit and I stepped next to Dave, as you see in the video before, and he says, well, if you catch a fish, I'm just going to jump in the water. And I said, well, when I catch a fish, I'll tell you what's wrong. So I caught a fish and I looked at him and I said, I'm going to tell you right now, it's the style jig. Yeah. I said, you need to go to a huggy instead of a stewie because they're not keyed in on stewie jigs. And the style makes a difference. You hooked on to, you put on a huggy and what happened? Immediate. Yeah. He started catching fish. Yeah. Am I trying to upsell you? No, but uh, all I'm trying to say is that the style of jig will make a difference sometimes. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to buy hundreds of dollars worth of jigs from us. I'm just saying that- It's the, good if you do. The, yeah, it's good if you do, but <laughs> the style jig does make a difference. So again, guys, Shay, I appreciate it. Had fun yeah. with you. Had, yeah, man, it was had a blast. fun cracking on you a little bit. Dave, yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, we'll, and I told them, I said, I would love to get them out on the Stamus and 
get out there and, and have some fun. So definitely, um, I'm glad th the main thing was to get you out there and get a better understanding of what you're looking at. And I hope hopefully after today, and you got some really good waypoints that you can go and fish yeah. and then you can learn off of those mm -hmm. because as soon as you understand what you're looking at there, you're going to start seeing so much more out there. Right. So again, everybody, thank you for watching. If you are interested in doing a, a consultation trip, I'll be more than happy to do it. I just got to have, it took us a few weeks to get a time frame down. So if you are interested, contact us through info at tampabayfishingchannel.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.